You are listening to a Cult Talk Network podcast. This time of year, throughout the Imperium, the story of our Lord Sanguinius is told. While each planet has their own version, we here on Ball know the true story. Now, gather round, children. It's time for the telling of the tale of Sanguinala. In a time of heresy and fear, the shining light of our Lord Primarch stood out among Welcome, everyone, to the very first December episode of Call of Lore. Hi. Hello. I'm Ben. I'm Eric. And I'm Jerry. So we're covering Sanguinala today, which is, this is probably going to be a shorter episode. I don't know that for sure, obviously, but I'm suspecting it will be because there's not a whole lot out there yeah. about it specifically, but we're going to do our best. Yeah. So this was this was a good one. Um, I I wasn't aware of it for too too long before this uh the recording of this episode right yeah just something that popped up a little bit and then you know you start researching it and you're right there's just not a whole lot that's that's on it no yeah I'm no sure i was kind of surprised by a it. lot of it seems to be kind of left up to the interpretation of the fandom and the fandom doesn't agree either yeah <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the I don't want to say mainstream because that automatically sets people on the opposite side usually, especially you know, and I'm the same way. But the kind of mainstream mainstream interpretation of Sanguinala is, in fact, Christmas, which yeah. is why this episode is here. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> but a lot of people kind of take Sanguinala to be more Easter, right? Which I also get. Yeah, that one also makes a lot of sense, and we'll find out why as we kind of talk about it. Right, and yeah. I had, and those people say that Candlemas. I believe is how you pronounce it, is the imperial holiday that represents Christmas. Candlemas. Yeah. Huh. And I tried to look up Candlemas just to be like, okay, well, I'll mention it on this episode. And I found less about it than I did Sanguinella. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean. I hadn't heard of that. Yeah. Huh. Uh, Candlemas. It's just, you know, it's a testament to the darkness of the 40K universe. Right. Right. It's just yeah. not a lot to celebrate. Yeah. <laughs> but. Guys, you know, our listeners, we're getting quite a few of you out there. If you guys know more about this, these two topics than what we present, please, we'd love to hear it. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, send, send us some rabbit holes to go down for sure, because uh, there will be more Christmases. Right. We're, we are by no means experts, nor do we claim to be. We just like to explore. Yeah. We're here to learn with you. So Sanguinala, what is Sanguinala? What is it? It seems to be primarily, if anything, the celebration of the greatest Primarch, Sanguinius. That light in the grim darkness of the galaxy. His angelic glory. That's right. <laughs> I, I like the supplication. Thank you. <laughs> ben, ben, ben taught us well. <laughs> yeah. Nope. I, of course, you know, if I'm all down for this. I'm a Blood Angels guy. I have a Blood Angels tattoo. You know, it yeah. is what it is. So this is... You know, Sanguinala is is the celebration of of the Blood Angels Primark, and I'm all about it. Yeah. So I don't know about you guys, but one of the core things that I found in researching Sanguinala is that there is no way to sanguin to s celebrate Sanguinala. At least no one specific one. There's not a lot tying it all together. It's just right. that it exists and it exists are doing it. And it tends to happen around the same time throughout the galaxy. Based Although how they do that, I have no idea Me because neither. The Imperium operates off of like four or five very different time zones, basically. Right. And they're not like hours apart. They're like weeks apart. Oh, wow. Huh. Yeah. Just because of the distance involved. Which makes a lot of sense. And, and I don't know much about their calendar other than like, you know, things take place in the 41st millennia. Well, so, so. they don't even know that. 
Right. That's that's their best educated guess. And yeah. I think there's actually more than one calendar that competes in the Imperium for being like the specific calendar. Oh. That is something I will admit that I've been confused on that I need to take a harder look at is the Imperial dating system. I'm just waiting till I run out of fun things to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's not high on the list, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is because it is something that definitely needs to be understood. But just like anything the administratum touches, it's just a cavalcade of fucking nonsense yeah <laughs> but yeah kind of what i was able to find as far as how it's celebrated is just like pick a planet you know what i mean right like, it's different depending on what planets you're on yeah they they're gonna have different traditions and stuff like that probably a lot of i imagine really kind of given the nature of what the holiday is celebrating probably a lot of like praying and fasting and a lot of incense burning. Yeah. Um, I also feasting, though. But. I found some. I, f I did find one reference that kind of described apparently what Sanguinola is like on Terra. Ooh. Hmm. And basically the way they described it is it's such a large celebration that it's almost mass hysteria, right? Like everybody kind of goes into this religious Ooh. fervor. Everybody's out in the streets. The administrat the, uh, administra the ecclesiarchy is all of them are out there just going haywire, preaching like to their heart's content. And it's really kind of a mix between Catholic Mass and Mardi Gras. Ah, oh. that's an interesting combination. On a planetary scale. So very like religious, but ecstatic yeah. at the same time. Carnival kind of. Yeah. Carnival. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, very. Yeah. That was the that was the one kind of. And it, I mean, there was no big detail on it. Right. Well, that's. Um, very reminiscent of what Saturnalia is, which is, I think, where they got the name from. Okay, oh. so, and that's a good, um, we'll go ahead and segue in into that first before we tell the actual tale of what Sanguinala tells. Not that we won't be retelling this again later, <laughs> but that's fine. I'll talk about this anytime. So, Jerry, you you were doing some Saturnalia research. Hit us with it. Okay, well, uh, Saturnalia was the Roman festival that celebrated Saturn, the god that they kind of, they kind of derived from Kronos, right? Uh huh. Okay. And they would the way they would celebrate it is they would make a sacrifice at the temple of Saturn, and then there would be a public banquet, and then they would do private gift giving. It's very much like a Christmas. Okay. They would do partying, you know, revelry and stuff, and uh, they would relax, relax their social norms. Like the slaves would be served by the masters and stuff. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, well, so I guarantee you that's probably not happening. Probably not. As Probably much as I would like Imperium to say mind. that the ecclesiarchy would go out and do something like that, we all know that ain't true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they would, you know, relax those social norms so that gambling and stuff was allowed. And uh, nice, cool, and and uh, that is neat. That's pretty far back for a lot. Like they have, you know, the gift giving and stuff. Those traditions that ended up, mm -hmm. you know, matching up, matching, evolving into Christmas. I presume, or yeah, in I, some way, I yeah, think part of it was absorbed Influenced into like. It. I forget who like really consolidated the Christmas, but right, yeah, Saturnalia. I I love this is one of the things I do love about 40k is like just these references to the re, you know our real war world stuff. They borrow from everything, everything for, and they're not afraid to, and it just works so well in the world they've set up. Like our fiction, our traditions, our myths. Like I think it really helps 40k kind of feel like some sort of pinnacle. In kind of like, so the Imperium is supposed to be basically the pinnacle of mankind. I mean, where they're at now, not, right? Not the dark age of technology, but you have the dark age of technology so that you can throw in the more Star Trek y stuff as well, right? And you really get this hodgepodge of everything that makes it feel like it is the fandom that is at the end of other fandoms, right? Right. Like the, the, accumulation of it or of the, all of yeah, yeah like every of the all of these different fandoms whether it's i don't want to say dune but whether it's like star wars which is you know 40k could happen way down the line with star wars even right. though that happens in the past somehow <laughs> you know and then you take like even lord of the rings is supposed to be a precursor to our world which is just a precursor to the 40k world so. right yeah oh yeah in a certain light the Lord of the Rings and 40K. Ooh. I won't. I won't finish that sentence. That's good. That's good. <laughs> the Eldari. <laughs> Elrond becomes a racist prick in the 40K future. <laughs> That's what happens. Starts calling people. Listen, I don't listen, Elrond. I don't. I don't appreciate the term monkey. Okay. Hey, mm. he was there when the world of men failed. Oh yeah. <laughs> 
Let's Eddie talk about Slow Nash, you asshole. Oh God. <laughs> but but it really but the borrowing of all of these different things really does make it feel kind of, in my opinion, like some sort of penultimate fandom. It's not, yeah. and that's an ego thing for right, sure. But sure. it does. But because there's so much in it, it, I think it helps give that feeling. And also, it makes it damn easy. To, how does he know? I don't know. Michael has. Michael a has of- literally called us in the <laughs> middle of of every recording for the past like four recordings. Yeah, yeah, he's, I've seen he's it. Psychic. I'm, yeah. ca- I'm calling it out on recording because yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, and sorry I ignored you, Michael. You know, yeah, but you ever listen to but, these, but <laughs> it had to be said. Like it's yeah. spot on. Good lord. Anyway. But anyway, it it really, and also what it really does is it helps you re- get people into it because it's like what I, I even I think that was one of the lines I first used on Eric. I was like, whatever you're into, forty k forty k's got it. You just have to find it. Yeah, Ooh. seriously, that was yeah. He he he. Uh, you know, I'm like I really like like Norse mythology and stuff like that. So the space wolves. So were yeah, I hit him with avenue. the space wolves. <laughs> just like ah, oh, all right. I'm a slut for Vikings. I'll take it. Yeah. And <laughs> and yes. this is just Saturnalia. The Sanguinala is just another really fine, fun example of yeah. that. Yeah. So that's a good good catch there, Jerry. I like that comparison there. This is yeah, yeah good. Yeah. yeah. And so what does Sanguinala celebrate? Well, it, it celebrates the life and yes, the death of the Primarch Sanguinius. Sanguinius. So let's do a 30,000 foot overview of Sanguinius because we want to save a lot for his actual Primark episode. Right. And a lot of, not a lot of, but a lot of what we're talking about can be referred, can, you can go back and listen to our Echoes of Eternity review. Mm-hmm. We touch a lot on that. But Sanguinius was the Primark of the Blood Angels. He was distributed on ball where he w- came to the attention of everybody because unlike the rest of his brothers, he was born with two, with a pair of wings on his back. Yeah. Hmm. And not tiny wings either. No. Now, what's interesting is in 40K, they acknowledge that they're not large enough to, to carry him. Oh, right? okay. Yeah, like if you look up the hmm. wing wingspan to the wingspan, ratio of the body, yeah. like his wings yeah. should be... Because like, like the weight of a human needs a lot of... Correct. Right. So his wings wing should be like 10, 12 foot. Like they should just be these ginormous things. They acknowledge that they're not, which helps kind of lend some credence that maybe his flight is warp related. Right. Hmm. Yeah. But anyway, Sanguinius was a good ruler. He took over Ball, as you know, Primarchs tend to do. Yeah. Of their home worlds. <laughs> My early years conquering a planet. Just yep. having a ball. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Happy Sanguinor. <laughs> I mean Sanguinala. Sanguinala. <laughs> but um I'm gonna ignore it. <laughs> He, that's my Christmas present to you. <laughs> but he uh, he uh, met the emperor, and he was the emperor's most loyal son. He had the gift of foresight. He knew he was coming. Um, he bowed the knee to him instantly without argument until the time of his death was considered to be the best of the Primarchs. He was arguably probably the best fighter, although yeah. he wasn't the strongest. He wasn't the best swordsman. He just had the the rage and the will to be able to just basically beat the shit out of anybody so much so that Kurz gets the drop on him in his in a book Kurz is in full battle plate and sanguinius is just in a cloth robe Hmm. and Uh. Kurz doesn't even try oh oh that's right i think i remember this he just um he just is like yeah he's like nope i'm here to talk he's like well i don't want none of this uh, even with like yeah it doesn't have anything Wow. No, yeah. no weapons, no Nothing. armor, and Kurz had the drop May on May as him. well have been naked. He's like, I'm, I'm not messing with that guy. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Uh, That's crazy. Sanguinius um, took prominence during the Horus Heresy, of course. Um, he fought Cabanda, beat him twice, held the Gate of Eternity by himself against, I think it was three legions worth of Astartes. Go see our Echoes of Eternity review for that. Better yet, read the book. The book is fucking great. Yeah. Was, was Angron there for that? He was. And and Sanguinius ended up beating a uh, demon Primarch Angron mm. in that fight as well. Cabanda held off the legions, beat Angron as well. And these were all kind of in succession, weren't they? These were one right after another yeah. after another. Yeah. Yikes. All that kind of same event. So and these. it was during that time when Horus uh, released the shields on his ship that allowed the Emperor, Rogel Dorn, a selection of Custodes, and Sanguinius to teleport aboard the ship. And that is where Sanguinius gave his life battling Horus. And even though he died, he uh, did damage to Horus's armor, which allowed the opening for the Emperor to 
defeat him ultimately. Yeah. And that is what Sanguinala celebrates is that sacrifice, which is why a lot of people compare it to Easter. Right. Right. Yes. But which makes a lot but, of sense. But he gave of himself, which also could be the spirit of Christmas as well. Yeah. That kind of he gave giving. he gave the gift of the Imperium the its ability to live. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's going to be a wee bit. So the so the Horus Heresy books are starting to approach this moment. They're quick. They're coming to the conclusion where Sanguinius, the Emperor, and Horus kind of have their square off. I wouldn't be surprised if it gets retconned a wee bit. You can't retcon this moment a whole lot because this is a moment that a it's lot been- of legendary in the mm-hmm. fandom. But I wouldn't be surprised. So the way the original story goes is that Sanguinius gets to Horus first. And because he's so exhausted fighting Cabanda and everybody, he just can't take Horus. Horus ends up strangling him to death. The Emperor then confronts Horus, fights him, refuses to fight him. Horus injures him to the ground. And then a custodius throws himself at Horus to defend the Emperor. And when Horus kills this custodes the emperor realizes that there's just no chance of saving horus takes him out hmm. i wouldn't be surprised if the way it actually ended up going down was that the emperor got to horus first hmm. and refused to fight him got put down and instead of a custodes that threw himself at horus it was sanguinius oh and it was the strangling of Sanguinius that convinces the emperor that there's nothing left of Horus because Sanguinius and Horus were very, very close. Yeah, they, Sanguinius was like his most trusted friend. Yeah, really? Okay. Yeah, I didn't know. I don't. I don't know anything about their relationship. They, so Horus was the only one to know about the red thirst inside of the Blood Angels. Oh, and he kept that secret from everybody, including the emperor. Oh wow. Okay. So that's pretty strong friendship. Yeah, they were. Yes. Yeah. Wow. But also, when Horus fell, he knew that Sanguinius had to die. He knew there was, it was like one of the first decisions he made. He knew there was no chance of turning him. There was no chance of beating him. Wow. How do you get there, man? I guess we'll find out. Yeah. I, I guess I'll find out because I have, I have some books to catch up on as far tuned. as Lamar's Harris. Oh, yeah. yeah. Gee whiz. So, honestly, that, does anybody got anything else to add? Uh, no, no. Okay. Yeah. Um, not really. Just kind of talking about like train of thought gone. Hang on. That's okay. Yeah. Do not, do not. We're going to, we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping, but do not click off yet. This quote has a part B to it at yes. the end. Yeah. We, yeah. I understand that when we start talking about call talk net, there's a steady drop off. I understand that. Totally get it. Don't hold it against you guys. There's nothing really listened to if you're not wanting to keep up on the news. I do That's, the same thing when I listen. Absolutely. To stuff. Yeah, yeah, everybody yeah, yeah. does. It's fine. Who's got the yeah. time? Exactly. <laughs> Well, it's just, it's if you're not invested in the the, the channel, channel itself, whole, it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just not as interesting. You're it's not what you're here for. Warhammer, but there is yeah. a quote at the there is a part B to this quote. So please, please, please stay for that. Yeah. So what? So we had we had uh, planes, trains, and automobiles drop. Yep. Have we decided? Has Call Talk Net decided what our Christmas movie is going to be? Yes, we have. So, um, eh, fuck it. I'm not asking. It's better to ask. Per forgiveness and permission. We are launching. I don't remember if we've announced this yet. The Cold of Russell. I don't. I don't know that we have. Well, I can always edit this out if if we have. Yeah, whatever. But it's going to be the Christmas Chronicles, which is Kurt Russell playing Santa Claus, Ooh. and that's going to launch. We're 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 setting aside, but not shutting down Cult of Campbell for a moment. Yeah. We're, hiatus. But, it's a hiatus. Yeah. We're going to let some new content from his build up and then we'll re re come back at it. Yeah. But we're in the meantime, we're picking up Kurt Russell and carrying on with him. And so the, the launch of that is going to be the Christmas episode, the Christmas Chronicles. And that will be on cult talk, cult of lores, uh, feeds. Yeah. Just like planes, trains and automobiles was. Yeah. On top of that, we've also got our Krampus episode. That's coming out probably the night before. Probably. Most likely this month. Yeah. To be determined. Yeah. But, but, so if you don't see an episode when it's supposed to be, it's going to come out Christmas Eve. Right. Yes. There might be a little adjustment there because yeah. we like to have we like to have new content for you guys when you're traveling and doing your you know your holiday things, doing the holiday stuff. We want to yeah. be part of the holidays. Or if yeah. you need to sequester yourself away from your family for a little while, you can just put in <laughs> your headphones, listen to an episode, and then come get right back at it. Yeah. Take care of your mental health. There right. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But also, I just want to you know this is the opening of the season, but still, guys. Happy Sanguinala, Merry Christmas, holidays, all of that stuff as we start getting into it. Yeah. 
also. And thank you for letting us be a part of it. We love celebrating the stuff with you. And uh, again, we really hope that you end up giving us some more uh, holiday rabbit holes to chase to to Absolutely. chase our way down. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. we love talking about this. I, lo- I love the culture stuff, and it's a shame that we weren't able to find too much on this one. But I, I'm I'm loving the idea of exploring some more. Yeah, I would really yeah, like to. Yeah. S- I would like to see the community get together and maybe do something that like over- online everybody can join into on a specific day. Yeah, that is something I was kind of looking for. Was like, what does the fandom do for Sanguinala? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, do they have anything? That's- it looks like there might be some memes. Some memes, yeah. There's yeah definitely some memes. memes are- <laughs> <laughs> there's a- some memes. There's a really good Sanguinala uh, fan made short on YouTube. Uh, oh, we'll yeah. put a link to it in we'll the description. That. It's got. Yeah. Uncle Voldemort on it as as a voice of a blood angel. That always makes me yes. Happy. So good find there, Jerry. That was a good that find was, on yeah, Jerry's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yep. pretty cool. So we'll put a link in the description to that. Yeah, and it's a good one to celebrate Sangwon all too. Yeah, watch that. I said Krampus. Yep, Krampus is coming up. Yep. So I think that's a good that's wrap up it. for now. And then after that, we'll be starting the new year, and there's going to be some new stuff coming with that. Yeah, I don't know what we're tackling the new year with. Yeah, that's going to be. That's gonna be a thing. We're gonna have yeah. to. We're gonna have to come back to that. Yeah. TBA. TBA. Yeah, absolutely. We're behind the eight ball on that one. We really <laughs> should have this shit figured out. But we are rank amateurs, <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> so we'll wrap it up here, guys. With that, thank you for joining us for this brief but fun Sanguinala episode, and we will see you on the Call Talk Net channels. Join us on all the other different feeds wherever Call Talk Net is. Call of Lore is there with its own feed. We will be having several holiday things coming down the pipe at you. I'm Ben. I'm Eric. And I'm putting on my red badge. Fuck, we didn't mention the red badge. Yes, we, d- <laughs> oh, we, we did. didn't. That's in the quote. We'll, we'll, let, them, the quote. we'll let them wonder. <laughs> yeah. And that, children, is the true story of Sanguinala. Now, if you've all been good and loyal to the Emperor, beloved by all, and wear your red badge of Sanguinius to bed, the Sanguinor will bring you each a present. Now hurry, off to bed. Yeah! <laughs>